Okay. Today is November 29th, 2023. My name is Valerie, and today's class is on chapter 9, verse 26. Should I do the invocation again? Maybe you can. Okay. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 And then we'll start with the, the Sanskrit words. Padram. Padram. Pushpam. Pushpam. Palam. Palam. Toyam. Toyam. Ya. Ya. Mi. Mi. Bhaktya. Bhaktya. Prayachati. Prayachati. Tat, tat, aham, aham, bhakti uparitam, bhakti uparitam, ashnami, ashnami, prayata atmana, prayata atmana. Patram pushpam, phalam toyam, patram pushpam, phalam toyam, yomi bhaktiya prayachati. Tadaham bhaktya uparitam. Tadaham bhaktya uparitam. Ashnami prayatat manaham. Ashnami prayatat manaham. Patram pushpam falam toyam. Patram pushpam falam toyam. Yomi bhaktya prayachati. Tadaham bhakti upritam. Tadaham bhakti upritam. Ashnami prayatat manaham. Ashnami prayatat manaham. Padram pushpam palam toyam. Padram pushpam palam toyam. Yomi bhakti prayachati. Tadaham bhakti uparitam. Tadaham bhakti uparitam. Ashnami prayatat manaha. Ashnami prayatat manaha. Patram pushpam palam toyam. Patram pushpam palam toyam. Yomi bhaktiya prayachati. Yomi bhaktiya prayachati. Tadaham bhaktiya uparitam. Tadaham bhaktiya uparitam. Ashnami prayatma. Ashnami prayatma. Atram pushpam palam toyam. Atram pushpam palam toyam. Yomi bhaktiya prayachati. Yomi bhaktiya prayachati. Tadaham bhakti upertam. Tadaham bhakti uparitam. Ashnami praya at atmana. Ashnami praya at Anyone online want to recite the verse? Chapter 9, verse 26. Okay, we'll read word for word. Padram. A leaf. A leaf. Pushpam, Pushpam, a flower, a flower, balam, balam, a fruit, a fruit, toyam, toyam, water, water, ya, ya, whoever, whoever, me, me, unto me, unto me, bhaktiya, bhaktiya, with devotion, with, with devotion, devotion. prayachati, prayachati, offers, offers, tat, tat, that, that, aham, aham, I, I, bhakti uparitam, bhakti uparitam. Offered in devotion. Offered in devotion. Ashnami. Ashnami. Accept. Accept. Prayatatmana. Prayatatmana. Of one in pure consciousness. Of one in pure consciousness. Translation If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. Purport by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada.
Here, Lord Krishna, having established that he is the only enjoyer, the primeval Lord, and the real object of all sacrificial offerings, reveals what types of sacrifices he desires to be offered. If one wishes to engage in devotional service to the Supreme in order to be purified and to reach the goal of life, the transcendental loving service of God, then he should find out what the Lord desires of him. One who loves Krishna will give him whatever he wants, and he avoids offering anything which is undesirable or unasked for. Thus, meat, fish, and eggs should not be offered to Krishna. If he desired such things as offered, he would have said so. Instead, he clearly requests that a leaf, flower, fruit, flowers, and water be given to him, and he says of this offering, I will accept it. Therefore, we should understand that he will not accept meat, fish, and eggs. Vegetables, grains, fruits, milk, and water are the proper foods for human beings and are prescribed by Lord Sri Krishna himself. Whatever else we eat cannot be offered to him since he will not accept it. Thus, we cannot be acting on the level of loving devotion if we offer such foods. In the third chapter, verse 13, Sri Krishna explains that only the remains of sacrifice are purified and fit for consumption by those who are seeking advancement in life and release from the clutches of the material entanglement. Those who do not make an offering of their food, he says in the same verse, are said to be eating only sin. In other words, their every mouthful simply deepening their involvement in the complexities of material nature. But preparing nice, simple vegetable dishes, offering them before the picture or deity of Lord Krishna and bowing down and praying for him to accept such a humble offering, enable one to advance steadily in life, to purify the body and to create fine brain tissues, which will lead to clear thinking. Above all, the offering should be made with an attitude of love. Krishna has no need of food since he already possesses everything that be, yet he will accept the offering of one who desires to please him in that way. The important element in preparation and serving in an offering is to act with love for Krishna. The impersonalist philosophers who wish to maintain that the absolute truth is without senses cannot comprehend this verse of Bhagavad Gita. To them, it is either a metaphor or proof of the mundane character of Krishna, the speaker of the Gita. But in actuality, Krishna, the Supreme Godhead, has senses, and it is stated that his senses are interchangeable. In other words, one sense can perform the function of any other. This is what it means to say that Krishna is absolute. Lacking senses, he could hardly be considered full in all opulences. In the seventh chapter, Krishna has explained that he impregnates the living entities into material nature. This is done by his looking upon material nature. And so in this instance, Krishna's hearing the devotee's words of love and offering foodstuffs is wholly identical with his eating and actual tasting. This point should be emphasized. Because of his absolute position, his hearing is wholly identical with his eating and tasting. Only the devotee who accepts Krishna as he describes himself without interpretation can understand that the supreme absolute truth can eat food and enjoy it. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nirvashesha Shunyavati Prashata Desha Tarane Jai Shri Krishna Kichanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Bhatya Gadahara Shri Vasti Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So to me this verse what stands out to me about this verse is, is the essence is, to me, it's speaking about essence and form, but also the difference between essence and form. And so the essence of offering food is, is love, love and devotion. The form of offering food is offering the food and saying the prayer and ringing the bell. But the essence is, is love and devotion and, um, the form isn't the end goal to offer the food, like physically offer the food. That's not the end goal. The end goal is to be of loving service, of a loving devotion. And the form is helpful. So it's not that the form doesn't matter because it's not the goal, but it's helpful in that it gets us to the goal. Just like, like the body is not who we are. To be in the body and attached to the body is not the goal of life, but the goal of life is to be of, of loving service to Krishna, to realize who we are, which is, which is devotees, loving servants of, of Krishna, of God. That is our dharma. So dharma, that which is not separate from 
heat is not separate from fire. Sweetness is not separate from sugar. So the Dharma, what's not separate from us and our soul is, is being of loving service to Krishna. And so our form is not, it's not the goal, but being in the body is really helpful to reach the goal. And so we have these bodies to, to evolve spiritually. And so as we're working towards the goal, the, then the form becomes more meaningful. So then in that case, like the body becomes more meaningful. The body is our, is our vehicle to evolve spiritually and, and, and liberate ourselves. And the form of, of offering the food is helpful to, to awaken love and devotion for God. And in that offering, like we might not always be in the mindset of love when offering food. I know for myself, like sometimes I'm just moving really fast and I'm like, okay, I got to offer the food and this is what I have to do. But also in doing that in offering food, sometimes I'll catch myself, like I'm moving really fast and I'm kind of living automatically. And then as I'm offering the food, it, I was like, oh, I remember, I remember this is about love. This is about devotion. And I pause and I relax and I'm like, oh, it's like, this is for you, Krishna. <laughs> And it, and it brings love. So through, through the discipline and, and engaging the form, so not just offering food, but also chanting and reading, like those are the forms that the spiritual practice takes, but the essence of the form is, is love. And through having discipline and practicing offering the food or chanting or reading, that helps us to start to open, open our hearts and, and be in love for Krishna. Um, so thinking about the essence in the form, it, it reminds me of intention versus expectation. Like the, the essence is the intention, really what's our intention. So our intention in, in bhakti is to be in love and in devotional service. And then the expectation is the form, it takes the form. It reminds me when I was 19 or 20, I, I went out and I traveled around the world for 14 months and I didn't have any intention of coming back. It was just like, I only had my backpack and I wasn't planning on coming back. And eventually I got to a point where I just was so exhausted and so ungrounded that I really needed to, I needed to ground myself. I went back to the States, to California and I, and I did some work. And after doing that work, my intention was to ground myself. I just really needed to, to ground. And the way that I saw that taking form was going to Mexico and renting out a place and just living on the beach and grounding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I really need to ground. The form that I see that is, is I'm gonna go to Mexico and rent out a house. But then like, like the, someone came into my life and they offered me to give, to give me a ride to this place. And then some, a friend happened to be there that offered to give me a ride to this town that I used to live in. And then I was in this town. And while I was there, another friend said, you know, I, I know someone that's leaving for a month and she's looking for someone to, watch her house and her cat for free for a month. And then another <laughs> friend said, hey, I'm looking for someone to help me in my restaurant. And so then I ended up just staying there <laughs> because I just had housing and I had a job. And then after that, I was living in that cabin and another housing opportunity opened up and it was a free housing opportunity again. So I just, like my intention was to ground. I was really clear. I was really clear I need to ground. I need to be settled. And then it just like the form took place around me. And, and I also sometimes see myself getting too caught up in the form. And so recently, I've, you know, I've been studying communication for a few years and um, a tool that I really value is reflective listening. And I, I just find it really valuable and I find it really effective. And what I've been noticing recently, well, I've been getting a lot of feedback from people, from friends and from clients that, that they're experiencing, the experiencing, like when I'm reflecting back, they, they're like, you're just repeating what I'm saying. And, and they're like, this is really intense and this is heavy. And this is not like, I was just getting the sense that there was actually disconnection happening. And my intention was to connect. Like I'm practicing this, this form, this communication tool so I can have connection, but I was more caught up and attached to the form than the essence. The essence is empathy and connection, but I wasn't connected to that. And so then I was getting lost in the form and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And so this, this verse just like brings me back to the importance of essence and, and studying bhakti in general, I feel like has just given me so much. I feel I've, in my experience, it seems like there's really an emphasis on essence and yeah, I just, then like things make sense. <laughs> 
when, when I understand the essence and the why. And so I'm really appreciating that about this verse, reminding me to, to be in touch with the essence. There was someone at Mother Molinies the other day and and she she doesn't cook very much and doesn't really like to cook. And she was talking about that. She was like, it's just a waste of time. Like I spend hours cooking and then I just eat for like 20 minutes. It's just, it's like a waste of time. I could I can be doing so many other things. I could be so productive. <laughs> and Mother Molly was saying, she was like, well, you know, what's what's more important than self-preservation? And and she and she thought about it and she was like, well, oh, spiritual practice. And and Molly was like, exactly <laughs> in this practice of bhakti like when, we, when we're cooking food or we're offering it to krishna it's all spiritualized when we offer food it's all spiritualized and so it, like, maybe we're spending hours cooking food and in that it's it's all spiritual and so we're, we're gaining benefit when we mm -hmm. offer the food whoever eats the food gains benefit spiritual benefit and then also whatever food that we're offering the plants or maybe it's milk and cows or maybe or maybe goats or other animals those plants and those animals also get benefit and so yeah yeah I, I was appreciating that moment and and then so the same person was also talking about she's um seeing someone right now that she's falling in love with and she was talking about how she then cooked a meal for him and I like, went overboard <laughs> and was like so excited and happy to cook this meal for this person that she had a lot of love for mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with Krishna like when we have a lot of love for Krishna or when we have a lot of love in general we're going to go overboard and we're going to do we're going to put more effort and more energy into it so if we're not cooking our own meals it might have a reflection of that we're not caring for ourselves we're not loving ourselves. Yeah, it could it could have a reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're not cooking our own meals, it could reflect that we're not we're not caring for us. We're not loving ourselves. Yeah, potentially we're moving like so fast that we're not we're not caring for our basic needs and spiritual needs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the finer brain tissues are not are not getting fed. And so that's also so in this verse, um it says that therefore we should understand that he will not accept meat, fish, and eggs. Vegetables, grains, fruits, milk, and water are the proper foods for human beings. And so um and then and then later in the verse it talks about brain tissues to create fine brain tissues, which will lead to clear thinking. And so when we're eating meat, fish, and eggs, it, you know, then it creates thicker brain tissues and, and not fine, not fine brain tissues. But when we're not eating meat, fish, and eggs, then that, that supports the finer brain tissues and nourishes the finer brain tissues. And Srila Prabhupada talks about the brain tissues pretty often. And here he mentions that it supports clear thinking and it also supports transformation. It also supports uh, spiritual understanding. And it, it mm -hmm. like opens us up to mm -hmm. understand spirituality and yeah and then in this verse it's also saying to to offer to krishna what he says he'll accept so if we're offering if we're offering meat or eggs or fish then we're actually not coming from a place of loving devotion so again maybe we could be lost in the form of like oh i'm offering this you know so i'm loving him but then it's actually the illusion because krishna's saying like i don't i don't accept I don't accept this. And then in this, I started to think about, okay, well, what about onions and garlic and mushrooms and chocolate and, and tea and coffee? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I read a couple or heard a couple of the things that Srila Prabhupada said in some interviews and also newspaper. And, and he was saying that onions are, um, I think he was saying that they dole the mind I'm not actually, I don't have it in my notes right now. Uh, and, and that caffeine, so decaf coffee and, and chocolate are intoxicants. And, and so those, and so those are all stimulating to the senses and agitating to the senses. And in yoga, the, you know, the point is, I guess one of the points is 
Well, the point is to realize that we're not this body. And so when we're attached to the senses, then we are in the illusion that we are this body. So when we're engaging in activities or eating food that's agitating to the senses, then, then we're more likely to be in the illusion that we're this body. And yoga, the, the point of yoga or what yoga is, it's, it's to avoid what agitates the mind. So even in the eight limb system, Ashtanga yoga, it's all about pacifying the senses so that we can, then we, so then we can reach samadhi, we can reach liberation. And yeah, I mean, I know so many people that, that practice or teach yoga that, that are eating onions and garlic and drinking caffeine and drinking alcohol. And it's like this, it's not yoga. It's, it's not yoga. And the yogic lifestyle is the most conducive to, to liberation. Um, so, I, okay, I'm reading in my notes, I'm seeing, going back to the brain tissues, that milk creates fine brain tissues as well. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, in, in yoga, in this lineage, cows are really sacred and milk is encouraged to drink and milk, uh, milk supports our spiritual involvement and uh, it's so it's saying this here milk Krishna creates fine milk and butter. krishna lives and <laughs> loves milk and butter yeah when i first read this this purport i didn't or the translation the verse i didn't see milk but then mm -hmm. in the purport it said that milk and i was like what like where did that come from you know <laughs> but if we look at krishna's pastimes he's stealing butter and, <laughs> and yogurt and yeah he loves he loves milk and so we we could see that from him from how he's living and how he's what he's eating we can see what is accepted for humans okay so this is my favorite part of the verse this is why i chose this verse to give a class on is because of this this realization i had when i read this verse so i'll, I'll read this part again in the purport, in the purport. Where is it? it's, a, it's the last chapter the last paragraph the last paragraph <laughs> towards the end of the paragraph um let's see okay it's actually towards the top of the paragraph krishna the supreme godhead has senses and it is stated that his senses are interchangeable in other words one sense can perform the function of any other so he can see with his hands, he can receive offerings through his legs, he can impregnate the material world with his eyes just by looking over them. He can, yeah, he can see sound. So the, the senses are interchangeable. Hear sight. So it says, this is what it means for Krishna. This is what it means to say that Krishna is absolute. And then it goes on and it says, Krishna's hearing the devotee's words of love and offering foodstuffs is wholly identical with his eating and actually tasting. And then Srila Prabhupada says, this point should be emphasized. <laughs> because of his absolute position, his hearing is wholly identical with his eating and tasting. That just like kind of blew my mind. It's like, okay, when we're offering food and we're, we're saying the prayers in love, then the prayers that we're saying it's wholly identical with his tasting. So as we're saying the prayers, he's tasting the, the food and he's eating the food. And then, so then I started to think, well, I, I meditated on that for a while. It just like kind of blew my mind. It's like, that's so amazing and beautiful. And so, okay, so if I'm saying this prayer and I'm offering food and Krishna's tasting the food, then what does it mean for me to chant the Maha Mantra? <laughs> what is Krishna's experience when I chant the Maha Mantra? He's dancing on your tongue. <laughs> He's dancing on my tongue, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and what else? Guys, yeah, so I've been meditating on that and I'm, you know, I will continue to meditate on that. And, um, but, and I've been reading about it and something that I was reading this morning is that that the Maha Mantra is, is a sound and it's, the sound incarnation of God. So the sound itself is the incarnation of God in this material realm, because with our material eyes and our material senses, we can't actually see God, can't see Krishna. And so then, you know, if we, if we can't see or know Krishna through our material senses, then how do we gain the knowledge? If we gain knowledge through spiritualizing 
the sense organs mm -hmm. and we spiritualize the sense organs through engaging our senses in enchanting japa and mm -hmm. reading Srila Prabhupada's books in on offering food and cooking for Krishna. That's how we spiritualize the senses. And then when we spiritualize the sense organs, then we start to see and feel Krishna. We start to see and feel God. So the the sound it, it's Vishnu Tattva, which means that it's an expansion that is equal to God. Um I don't have it in my notes, but I read I read something about like the sound is, is, or incarnation in Sanskrit is avatar. And avatar means like coming down from the spiritual realm, from the transcendental realm, coming into the material realm. So the sound is coming from the transcendental realm into the material realm. And the sound itself is Krishna. So when we're associating with the sound, when we're chanting, then we're associating with God. And what we associate, who we associate with, we start to become. There's been lots of studies on this, lots of, scientific studies on that, that we are, we become the closest five people around us. So it's so important who we associate with because we start to become who we associate with. And- Or they start to become- Or they start to become <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we're reading Srila Prabhupada's books, we're associating with a pure devotee. When we're chanting the Maha Mantra, we're associating with God. So as when we associate with God, we start to become godly. So Srila Prabhupada uses this analogy that the iron rod and you know, an iron rod, it's iron, it acts like iron. Then you put it into a fire and, and then it starts to get warmer and warmer and warmer and it becomes hot, it becomes red. And then it starts to act like fire. So if you take this iron rod and touch anything with it, it's not going to act like iron anymore. It's going to act like fire. It'll burn anything that it touches. So this, this iron rod, as it's associating with the fire, it's becoming the fire. That's the same thing when we're associating with God or pure devotees, and we're starting to become godly. We're starting to become more pure. I'll end it there, mm -hmm. and I'll and I'll open it up to any comments or questions, or if you want to share anything that's alive for you, anyone in person or online. I have a question, but I'm thinking about two stories that I've heard about um, where this this plays out. Like that story of Sudama when he takes the chit rice to Krishna and he's he's kind of embarrassed and it's not much and it's like the, the cheapest rice and he's kind of hiding it, but then Krishna's like eats it off of the bag breaks and he eats it off the floor and he's he's happy because the intention was pure and he's not worried that it was cheap rice. And then the other story about, I think it's banana peels or something. That, uh, maybe Vidura's wife or somebody um, was peeling bananas and she's so enamored with Krishna that she gives, instead of giving him the banana when he was busy, she gives him the peels or something. And he just eats them like they're delicious because <laughs> <laughs> she, she was so beautiful in preparing them for him. So it seems like there's probably a lot of stories like that, but those are popping in mind. But that's um it does, it's not necessarily as long as we don't you know stay away from the forbidden list it's it's like with it's that intention it's the love it's the it's it's how it's the prayer and how we offer the prayer so we're not rushing through the prayer and I, I have to do this and it's it's not um it doesn't have to be the perfectly cooked meal or the most expensive opulent meal it's this it's simplicity it's sincerity and it's um, our intention, it's love. And and then I was thinking when you were talking about, you know, Prabhupada says this about love, like a, like a mother loves a baby. I don't have a baby and I've never had a baby, but I have friends who have babies and, and I've had, I've been around babies. And so that where you just like, it's not, there's no excuse. Like when it needs you, this child needs you, you're, it doesn't matter if it's three in the morning or there's vomit everywhere or if it's, I'm, I'm sure Devin knows, <laughs> but you know, it's like, you just, you don't, you're not, you don't have this like, oh my God, I got to do this thing and I got to hurry up and do it. You do it out of loving devotion. And I see that with my friends and with neighbors that have babies. And so, yeah, I like that. It kind of freshens up the whole 
um, when you were sharing, I was thinking about the altar and then I was reading this about bowing down mm -hmm. and I was like, well, I don't really, I used to bow in the kitchen and have a little rug because the floor was sometimes dirty. And I don't know what happened if that's not happening anymore. And I was like, wow, it says right here to do that. So I'm kind of rethinking that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody here is doing that. I'm not bowing down when they offer their food. So yeah, I'm just seeing kind of repeated like everything else in the Bhagavatam. It kind of repeats itself as like it presents in all these different ways to remind us, um, remind us that it could be really simple. Is yeah. that has that clean heart. Um, yeah, I enjoyed hearing about the um the brain, the, the brain tissue, the refined brain tissue, getting clarity when well, we're clear and we're clear intention and we're eating the, these, these things that are mentioned and not other things. And we're all, we're getting that spiritual clarity. I mean that. And so all of this is like, I like this verse. I don't, I've never learned it, but I want to, and it kind of, it, I don't know how I've missed this one. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. I hear it all the time. So I kind of knew, knew it, but I don't really know it. And I was thinking I might learn it because you're teaching a class on it. So a lot of good stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff flushing up really positive about checking in with my offering and checking in with um, the process, but not getting caught up in the process, the, the ritual of offering the food. It feels like a fresh, like when I first got into Krishna consciousness, I really liked this part. I didn't know what I was doing, and I, but I was attracted to it. And I remember wanting to go right home and like clean my kitchen and get everything organized and, and, and learn it and, and learn, the, learn the prayers and go through it. And and then, of course, that's been a few years. And so now it's kind of getting a little stale. And and I need to, I feel like, I, I feel like this verse is um, sort of giving me a little push to like a little soft nudge <laughs> to just check in, check in with the process in there in the kitchen and regroup a little bit yeah. freshen it up get a little get a little um support in the sincerity department i could use some of that too. <laughs> yeah and just remembering that some of the stuff that we eat we choose to eat it's not it's really not helping the situation <laughs> <laughs> i knew that already but <laughs> i really need to check in there too yeah. yeah thank you it was beautiful to have like a little refresher for shadow mm -hmm. and uh first class tonight. Thank you, Valerie. Thanks for coming out here to do it too. Yeah. Especially here at the face to face. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate what you're what you were mentioning about the you were speaking to the form again, that it's not about the form, it's about the essence. Like the, the story about the banana and Krishna eats a banana peel, like it's a mm -hmm. delicious, yeah. you know, because really it was coming from a place of love and devotion. So like the form really doesn't matter. It can be simple. It's just like coming from the place of love and and, and I appreciate that you're feeling inspired to, to like clean up the energy in the kitchen. And then, and, you're, and I also appreciate that you're, you're saying like, oh, in, in here, it's saying to bow down. Like you're, you're wanting to listen to yeah. what we're being taught. Yeah, another step that might, I don't know, humility. You know, humility, yeah. Down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I feel like um, a lot of times I'm always in rush mode as well. So, um, and it, and I don't take the essence that you're speaking of into heart space until it's like for a service mm -hmm. for others, especially for a program. Mm -hmm. And then I'm much more intentional and loving and thinking of Krishna and usually singing the Maha Mantra while I'm in the kitchen. Like making the apple pie was amazing, and so like or thanksgiving um i was also giving thanks to krishna and Prabhupada, and you know so i had them in my heart while i was um yeah making this dessert from my family so i knew they'd give special mercy and it just it warmed my heart that um that you know they were all getting for shop and they didn't know <laughs> mm -hmm. like you know i don't speak of it i just um i just that's my secret bullet with my family members um so, and then when I see them enjoy it so much, then it's like, oh, yeah, it's even mm. sweeter. Like that apple pie is even mm. much, much nicer. <laughs> mm. So, um, but yeah, I feel, I feel inspired when, especially when I'm serving others. And, and I love um, 
also a leaf and a flower. So like I like to make garlands. And so mm -hmm. I also, I know he doesn't speak to that here, but I know Krishna loves garlands. <laughs> and, um, and so yeah, I'm feeling more and more these days uh, more connected with uh, offering Krishna and Prabhupada uh, garlands. And, uh, and then that's always like meticulous work for me, like, you know, picking the flowers and what's the pattern going to be and what are the colors going to look at. And then, and then I'm very um, um, precise, like everything has to like be uh, equal on both sides. <laughs> so like, I, yeah, so I try to, um, yeah, present something really nicely that, that, that would be pleasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, yeah, it is, it also shows me the slowing down when I slow down to actually enjoy that service. It's just much more beneficial for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm enjoying your class. I also like the, the brain tissue because that's a good reminder. I, um, I used to be a very big milk drinker because that's I grew up in Iowa. <laughs> so there were dairy farms and we could get fresh milk actually delivered outside in a, in a canister. And it was in you know, the glass bottles. <laughs> yeah, the glass bottles. And my father drinks milk like um, every meal, every meal. And so that's what's also nice is I, I, um, I bless the milk. So that mm. when he's, you know, I'm out there during the week and he's having his milk, you know, it feels very special too. <laughs> So sweet. So just, just little things that um, come to mind. They're just simple, but I feel it's really the Lord's mercy upon my family members. Mm, that's sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Brother Molly? Bye, Krishna. Thank you for your class, Valerie. It was fun. And to hear your realization and your enthusiasm. Do you can hear me? I can hear you. Yep. Okay. I appreciate Anansuya's uh, sharing because, you know, we look at the form and the essence. And in a sense, yeah, the form doesn't matter. Like, um, like Shri Priya shared two examples of the cheap rice and the banana. At the same time, if we do that, then we are missing on manifesting love. So the form also is a, is showing our love, like Anansia was sharing, like I, I want to make the most beautiful garland for the Lord. Or I want to make, you know, like you were sharing the example of that person <laughs> who like went above and beyond. And that above and beyond cooking for whatever boyfriend, whatever it was. <laughs> That's that's a manifestation of love. So in a sense, you know, the form also manifests the love. Because, you know, naturally when, when we are in love, then whatever we create, could it be cooking or making garland or cleaning or is going to be above and beyond and, you know, really uh, to please the Lord with what the Lord, the Lord of his pure devotee, with what they like with what we think they will appreciate with, with a garland made, you know, in a symmetrical way, not that I, I just take the flower and push them in, inside on, on, on a thread. No, there is, there, is a, there is a meditation, there is a care, there is, there is all that. So it's interesting that the, the form also shows the love, manifests the love. That's another point in, to the conversation. Hare Krishna. Hi Krishna, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that the it's not that the form doesn't matter, the form does matter. It's it's it is a manifestation of the love. Yeah, thank you. Would anyone else like to share anything that's happening for you? Any questions, comments? I just think of also um, developing a higher taste. Like that also is part of um, Prabhupada's um, experiencing his, his little cookbook and and all the recipes in there that um, were the first ones that I tried really because I was not a vegetarian um, before I joined Christian consciousness. So I was looking for recipes and um, and then and then it was fun because 
I was like, okay, so what else is there? And um, so then I was like getting to see other um, devotees that had cookbooks and and I love the ones like Yumina Devi that Dossi that has, mm -hmm. you know, so many like, beautiful stories and um, there's like all this, you know, affection for the Lord and also sharing um, about the, his pastimes too. And like, there's, so it's a, it's a, yeah, weaving, in the pastimes of the Lord with the recipes of why this particular recipe was so special. Like mm -hmm. there's like, there's like wanting to please as Melanie was saying. So, um, so someone who is a more senior devotee that has that knowledge and shares that knowledge with me, I, I really have a true affection and appreciation um, that they share it with the world. Like, you know, so that, uh, it, that's, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we have cookbooks here that, that, you know, draws that, you know, special um, essence of why uh, those recipes are being offered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see Devin. I talk to Devin. <laughs> Hi, Krishna. Oh, I don't hear you. Mm -hmm. muted. <laughs> You're muted. Valerie in person at Prabhupada House. Hi, Prabhupada House, I said. Hi. And, uh, <laughs> Nice. Valerie is very mobile. <laughs> she's here. You don't know where. Um, she pops up anywhere. <laughs> maybe you can, um, I have something on my mind and maybe you can make it relate uh, more than I will, but I'll try. Um, it's something that it just comes to mind for me actually kind of often and it's coming to mind for me now and it's it's in the spirit of like, okay, I want to offer something. What, what's the form? Um, garlands or food, and then, and then, uh, and then that the part of me that definitely wants Christian to see me and appreciate me. You know, it becomes about me. For, for me, it becomes about me kind of quickly. And and I think about this principle of like, well, Radharani, she knows how to please Krishna better than anyone else. So. It, you know, serving the love between Radharani and Krishna, serving Radharani to serve Krishna, serving the servant of the servant of the servant principle. It's like, she knows how to please Krishna better than me. But then I notice, well, I'm resistant to that. And it's probably a lot about because I want to, I want to get some credit. So if I'm serving the servant of the servant of the servant, of the servant they're not going to know that I was pleasing Krishna. I want Krishna to know, like, I'm pleased. But then Krishna does know, of course, I, I'm answering my own question. I'm talking to myself through this. <laughs> um, but then Krishna does know uh, that I'm, you know, wanting to please him. But also, I guess this is the mixed modes. This is the mixed modes because I'm, I'm coming from sattva, rajas, tamas, a mix because I'm wanting um, some recognition, right? And uh, okay, and so part part of that my sharing is a story that I'm not really clear about, but it's in my mind of where Lord Brahma goes to, I think, the gates of Vaikuntha. So he goes to the gates of Krishna's... Um, I've got Christmas music going on. i got kids running around. There's like someone else on the phone. Okay. Um, Brahma goes to the gates. Of, Who's, I'm here to see Krishna. Who's here to see Krishna? He's like, well, Brahma's telling Brahma's here. And it's like, okay, Brahma's, which Brahma? You know, it's like, which, which Brahma? Um, and I'm like, wow, this is humbling for me. You know, this is Brahma, the creator of our universe. The whole universe expands and contracts and, you know, with the day and night of Brahma. So I'm like, who, which Brahma? Oh, our universe is just like a, a mustard seed in a jar of mustard seeds. So they're like, Brahma's puffed up. I'm puffed up, right? I, <laughs> I think I'm important, you know, and I want, and I am important. Um, you know, Brahma is important. So, but yeah, it's just calling out ego, calling out puff, puff. I'm calling myself out, puffed up this, wanting recognition. Um, yeah, so in all this offering and love, I'm just expressing about mixed modes and like that, mixed mm -hmm. motivations. Thanks for sharing, Devin. Yeah, and I and I think that it's really natural and normal and to to want to be recognized and to want to be loved 
Like that's like, I think that's like our heart's desire is to love and be loved by Krishna and to know that and to feel that. And so I think that it makes sense that you want to be seen and loved by Krishna. And it sounds like you also want to be humble. You want to be humble and you're giving yourself a perspective. Thanks for the simple reflection. I like that. You, you sum things up really, really nicely. Yeah, I resonate with that. I want to be humble and I'm, I'm getting perspective on that. I want to be Krishna and I want to cultivate humility. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to share? Just my appreciation for you being here, Prabhupada tells. And um, my appreciation for our, our guests who arrived in time for class. Mm -hmm. And um, just feeling really sweet and intimate and, and uh, special. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for inviting me here. I always love being here. <laughs> How do I close the class? Okay. I'll repeat the verse. Translation. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a lot of people. Jobs coming, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.